Okay, so some of the kids that are stuck at home asked for a video. So what I'm gonna do is a couple things. First, make sure that you realize that this side is what's assigned, down the left, front and back. Because the front and back is different. So I wanna make sure that you have experience with both. But kinda think about this as two sides to the worksheet, left and right. Um, so the right side is going to be extra credit. And to get the extra credit, you have to show your work and do the triangles and all that good stuff and no answers are posted. So don't do it unless you really need the extra points. Um, if you know what you're doing and it's easy, if it's gonna be a total grind, then maybe skip it. Okay, so for all of these types of problems, you need to know what quadrant you are in. Sometimes they make it easy by saying things like quadrant two. So you draw yourself the x and y coordinate, quadrant one, two, three, four. So this one's in quadrant two. You always need a triangle. It's always a right triangle. And you always form the triangle with a vertical line out here and then connecting back so that your right angle is out in the corner. This is the angle they're talking about. That's the theta is in this little corner here. So think about what you know from forever. Um... In this quadrant, if this is your x coordinate, it's going to be negative because you went left. And your y is going to be positive because you went up. Okay, well, now we're looking at the triangle in terms of this is across from, so opposite. This is next to, so adjacent. And then this is the hypotenuse. Okay, so we have drawn our triangle. But now we need some numbers, obviously. So we go over here and, be, and see what this is gonna give us for info. Sign, okay, sign is made up of opposite over hypotenuse. So it's straight up telling you that the opposite side is three, the hypotenuse is five. So I don't know this bottom part, but in every single problem, I use Pythagorean theorem to find it. So I don't know my x, but x squared plus my y squared, so that's a three, has to equal my hypotenuse squared. So then this is gonna become this. Now this one's pretty easy because the numbers are really user-friendly. So when I'm done, I have four. But keeping in mind that you're going left four, this is actually gonna have negative four as a label for that side. So we have this as our adjacent, this as our opposite, this as our hypotenuse. And now, we can fill all this good stuff in at the bottom. They already told us the sign up in the problem. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. So then the cosecant is the reciprocal of that. <coughs> Just like in class, I'm gonna choke and lose my voice. Cosine is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. So I look up at my picture. My adjacent side is negative four. My hypotenuse is five. For secant, I flip them over. And so I have five over four. It's still negative though. And I don't write it on the bottom because that's weird. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I look at my triangle. Opposite is three, adjacent's negative four. But again, you don't put the negative on the bottom. Cotangent flips that over. So four over three, but it's still a negative. Keep in mind, if sine is positive or negative, so is cosecant. They're partners. Whatever sine cosine has, so in this problem it's negative, secant will have the same thing. And whatever tangent is, cotangent will be the same thing. So that's pretty straightforward. One, figure out the quadrant. What am I doing besides making a giant blob here? Sorry. Two, draw your triangle. Label it with opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. Three, use the information that they gave you to put some numbers on your triangle. Four, use Pythagorean theorem to find that last side and think about whether it needs to be positive or negative based on the quadrant that you're in. And then last, you actually answer the questions, which is ironically the easiest part. So let's talk about the quadrant a little bit. Um, when you are thinking about quadrants, in quadrant one, your X is positive. That's not what I meant to write. 
your X is positive, your Y is positive. But we're getting away from using X, Y, and we're going to be talking about it in terms of cosine and sine. So that would mean I have a positive cosine, <clears throat> positive sine, and the tangent is a combination of taking the Y over the X. So if you took a positive Y divided by a positive X, you get a positive tangent. Here in quadrant two, I go left and then up, so negative x or cosine, positive y or sine, and then dividing the y by the x, positive divided by a negative, I'm gonna end up with a negative tangent in that quadrant. So then in quadrant three, I would have a negative x to get left and a negative y to get down into that quadrant, and then dividing a negative by a negative makes it have a positive tangent in that quadrant. And then over here, I'll go to the right and down, and the combination of those two, negative divided by positive, is gonna result in a negative in that quadrant. This information is gonna be super helpful. You're not really memorizing it, you already know that. Like you already know from graphing points back in middle school, what positive and negative X is, like what direction they mean to go. What you might not know is how to interpret this thing down here. When you have this, which is the x and y coordinate, if you were traveling around it to draw an angle, you would have 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270, and then back the entire way around for 360 if you were dealing in degrees. If you're dealing in radians, which is something we're going to learn next week, and you've done it before, this is pi over 2, pi halves. This is 1 pi. This is three pi halves or one and a half, and then all the way around is two pi. So this is helping us do the first step. Up here it was really easy because it said quadrant two. On the back side, it's getting a little bit more tricky, but if you look at what I just did and you're supposed to stay between pi halves and pi, you're staying between the top and this left, that's gonna mean quadrant two again. See if you can figure that out. So it's between pi halves and pi. So that puts me in quadrant two. So when I go to do my problem, I draw straight up in quadrant two and I connect back down. This is going to be the corner I'm talking about. So opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. This will be positive because I'm going up, negative because I'm going left, and the hypotenuse is always, always, always positive. This is a little trickier. They told me the cosecant. I don't like cosecant. This pile over here is not good. This pile is fine with me. So I'm going to flip it over and write my sign, which is then telling me my opposite and my hypotenuse. So I can go back to my triangle now and say, okay, the opposite side is 2. The hypotenuse is 3. But I don't know this adjacent side. So just like every single problem, I have to use Pythagorean theorem. This is my x, my y, and my hypotenuse. So x I don't know, squared, plus y, which is 2, squared, equals the hypotenuse squared. So I end up with this. And I am not using decimals. I'm being exact. And so this side on the bottom is root 5, but since I'm going to the left, it's negative. So when I go to fill in the stuff at the bottom, I'm going to use 3 for hypotenuse or H, 2 for O or opposite, and negative root 5 for my adjacent side. So that can get kind of messy now because I don't just have good numbers like 3, 4, 5 like before. So when I go to do cosine, I need adjacent over hypotenuse. Looking at my triangle, that's negative root 5 because that's the adjacent side over a hypotenuse of three. Excellent. So secant flips that over, but you can't leave your answer like this. You need that radical out of the bottom. So you have to multiply, oopsies, by that. I just made that super blobby. Um, so now, 
I'm gonna rationalize that into three root five. There's a negative in this problem and I don't like to write on the bottom because that's weird. And root five times root five is five. Since this three out in front and this five on the bottom don't reduce, I'm done. And my secant is negative root, excuse me, negative three root five over five. <clears throat> And last is my tangent, opposite over adjacent. So my opposite in the picture, a two, and my adjacent, a negative root five, yuck. But if I flip it over, not yuck. So this one's good to go. This one I have to rationalize. So when I clean that up, I get a negative because this doesn't go away, but I don't want it on the bottom. Then two root five, over a regular five, because that's what happens when I do root five times root five. So my answers for sine, cosecant, cosine, secant, tangent, and cotangent. So it's always the same process. Quadrant, draw the triangle, label the sides, use Pythagorean theorem, answer the question. It can just be more complicated depending on whether they give you something from the sad face pile or the smiley face pile, and if you have radicals. So hopefully these two examples help you out. And again, everything on the right side is going to be um, extra credit. Sorry. So hopefully this helps, and that way when you come back, you won't feel as lost and confused. Hope to see you soon.